lateral clavicle, dislocations and fractures, the LCP clavicle hook plate. The LCP clavicle hook plate provides a treatment option for acromioclavicular or AC joint dislocations and lateral clavicle fractures, especially those with very small fragments or comminuted fractures. The main part of this presentation will demonstrate the treatment of an AC joint dislocation. As an alternative, the treatment of a clavicle fracture will also be shown. The LCP clavicle hook plate is available in different lengths in both left and right sided versions. Hooks of 12, 15, and 18 millimeters provide optimal sizing and screw positioning. In the case of an acute dislocation, the four hole plate is recommended and will be used in the exercise. The soft radius, smooth hook design, posterior hook offset, and rounded shaft profile minimize the risk of conflicts between the plate and the surrounding soft tissue, the AC joint, and the rotator cuff. Trial implants can be used to determine the proper hook size. According to Rockwood, Dislocations of the AC joint are classified into six different types of injuries based on the number of torn or ruptured ligaments. Type 1 and 2 injuries are treated conservatively. In general, type 3 injuries also are treated conservatively. The indications for operative treatment depend on the level of activity as well as the horizontal instability of the AC joint. Type 4, 5, and 6 injuries are treated operatively. Dislocation of the AC joint can typically be differentiated using stress X-ray examination on both sides. The coracoclavicular distance is easily measured with digital imaging. Preoperative measurement of the lateral clavicle on the contralateral side can also help to estimate the hook length of the plate that will be needed. For the preliminary reduction, a power drive and K wire are required. For the fixation of the plate, the standard LCP tool set is used. The patient is placed in the beach chair position. Care is taken to position the neck correctly. A proper position of the cervical spine in all planes should be provided. Excessive extension of the neck is avoided. The support plate under the treated shoulder is removed. On the injured side, the draping of the arm should allow free movement of the shoulder. The anatomical landmarks are the lateral clavicle, the acromion, and the coracoid. Through a superior saber-cut incision located slightly medial of the AC joint, the deltotrapezial fascia is exposed. Care is taken not to injure the lateral supraclavicular nerves. The acute dislocation is marked by a rupture through the superior acromioclavicular ligament with prolapse of the intraarticular disc remnants that usually remain partially attached to the clavicle and incomplete rupture of the acromial fibers of the trapezius. In Rockwood type 5 injuries, the coracoclavicular ligaments and the periosteum are also ruptured and the periosteal sleeve of the deltoid and trapezius muscle attachments is completely slipped. The arm, and therefore the scapula, is elevated towards the clavicle and supported by an assistant. The acromion is reduced to the clavicle in the horizontal and vertical planes. The AC joint, 
may be temporarily fixed with a transacromial K wire inserted into the distal clavicle. Care must be taken that the clavicle be reduced in the correct horizontal position. This reduction can be confirmed with an intraoperative axial C-arm view. The posterior aspect of the AC joint capsule is identified, and a 5 mm detachment of the extracapsular fibers of the trapezius from the medial border of the acromion is performed. This detachment will allow the hook of the plate to pass under the acromion. In the fresh dislocation, the superior acromioclavicular ligament should be repaired. The coracoclavicular ligament can also be repaired. In the chronic dislocation, the ligaments in general cannot be repaired, so they have to be reconstructed. One option is to transfer the coracoacromial ligament to the distal clavicle after resection. The preferred method is a reconstruction of the voracle clavicular ligament using autogenous ligament grafts. Here the hamstring tendons were used, as shown in the post-operative x-ray. However, the tendons of the plantaris or palmaris longus muscles may also be used. Trial implants are provided to help select the proper hook size. In this case, the trial implant with a 15 mm hook is used to demonstrate the technique. In the clinical situation, the choice of the trial implant should take into account the size of the patient. The hook of the trial implant is passed under the acromion and the shaft of the trial implant is placed on the superior aspect of the clavicle. If it is difficult to lower the shaft onto the clavicle, then an implant with a larger trial hook should be used. An intraoperative x-ray control is made to verify that the hook size is correct. Once the plate shaft is placed on the clavicle, the entire surface of the hook must be in contact with the underside of the acromion. It must be confirmed that the correct anatomic alignment of the clavicle and acromion has been restored without impinging on the rotator cuff. If the radiological control shows that the hook is not in full contact with the entire length of the underside of the acromion, then either the posterior position of the hook or the posterior reduction of the clavicle must be corrected. Correct alignment is achieved by positioning the plate at the posterior lateral end of the distal clavicle and not at the clavicular shaft. This adjustment ensures the correct anterior position of the hook. It also guarantees that the hook will not be pointed in the direction of the spina scapulae. The trial implants should never be bent or implanted. Once the hook size has been determined, the trial implant is removed and the selected implant is positioned. The implant is placed in the position that was determined using the trial implant. If needed, the plate can be fixed temporarily with a K-wire through the drill sleeve in the distal hole to fix the distal part of the plate. Temporary fixation can also be done by introducing a cortical screw in the most medial plate hole or by securing the plate with a clamp. The correct position of the hook relative to the under surface of the acromion is verified. It is hardly ever necessary to bend the hook. After the correct plate position is confirmed with the image intensifier, definitive fixation with screws is begun. It should be noted that titanium and steel implants and screws should not be mixed. The LCP drill sleeve is inserted with care into the threaded medial hole of the plate.
with a 2.8 mm LCP drill bit. The screw hole is pre-drilled through both cortices. The required screw length is read directly from the drill bit. The depth gauge can be used to confirm the length of the screw. The screw length should be carefully respected in order to prevent neurovascular injuries. The first locking head screw is inserted with the hexagonal or star drive recess screwdriver mounted on the 1.5 newton meter torque limiter. The screw is introduced either manually or with a power tool until a click is heard. If a power tool is used, the speed should be reduced when tightening the head of the locking screw into the plate. When the dislocation is acute, two screws should be inserted into the medial part of the plate to ensure a stable fixation of the implant. So the procedure is repeated for the second medial plate hole. A final check confirms that all the screws are locked. Final tightening should be done manually. The K wire used for temporary fixation is removed. The correct final position of the implant can be seen here. The implant is usually removed 10 to 12 weeks after implantation and healing. It is recommended that the LCP clavicle hook plate be removed to prevent osteolysis of the acromion or impinging on the rotator cuff. Fractures of the lateral clavicle are classified according to Jaeger and Breitner. There are five types of injury differentiated, depending on the relationship between the fracture line and the coracoclavicular ligaments. Type 1 injuries, where the fracture line is lateral to the coracoclavicular ligaments, are mostly treated conservatively. Type 2A and 2B injuries are treated operatively because of the high risk of pseudarthrosis when treated conservatively. Type 3 injuries, where the fracture line is medial to the coracoclavicular ligaments, are mostly treated conservatively. Type 4 injuries are injuries in infants. Classification according to the OTA may also be used. In cases of small lateral or comminuted fragments, internal fixation of each fragment is neither possible nor necessary. The hook of the plate helps to reduce the lateral clavicle, so it's not necessary to reduce the fragments individually. Temporary fixation of the fragments can be done with clamps or a K-wire. It is important that the plate and plate hook are positioned correctly as shown here. In the case of a lateral clavicle fracture, the plate must be sufficiently long to ensure appropriate fixation on the medial side of the fracture. However, in most cases of a fracture situation where a seven-hole plate is required, adaptation of the plate by twisting it is necessary for the most medial screws to engage properly. This presentation has demonstrated the application of the four-hole LCP clavicle hook plate for both an AC joint dislocation and a lateral clavicle fracture. In general, two bicortical screws in the medial part of the plate are sufficient. In both cases, it's essential that the correct position of the plate and the clavicle are maintained.